Welcome to the Station Wagon. I'm the older brother, Mark. And I'm little sister, Julie. This is the podcast where my brother and I give up something we take for granted and tell you how it goes. Buckle up and enjoy the ride. Are you sitting up straight right now? <laughs> I don't know. Should I be? No, I'm not sitting up straight. Not yet. Not yet. Because. Are, are we doing an actual introduction here, Julie? What's going that on? Was, that was. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we. This is the introduction. Welcome, everyone. We are talking about slouching and posture today. Yeah. We're going to give you some science and history on it, and then we're going to give it up for two weeks. We're going to be stiff backed ramrod straight people oh, no that's wrong you and know, then i, I want to know just wait just like how do you how do you pronounce the word p-o-s-t-u-r-e posture posture you, what do you say posture no i think i say it posture? more with like kind of a ch sound in there listeners yeah. really quickly pause the tape that that's you're listening to us posture. on and say say that word to yourself and then turn the tape back on and then tell us how you say it Posture. I say the C-H. You do? Because it sounded yeah. like you were saying P-O-S-T-U-R-E, like posture. Well, I said that the second time when I was making fun of you. Posture. 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 Let. Hi, Julie. Yes, hey. I'm, I'm not sitting up straight yet. And okay, well, this episode, like all of our other episodes that have been so awesome to do, this one <laughs> is going to suck. <laughs> Just saying. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to be so good at this. Oh, you are? Yeah. Give me like just one quick reason why. Pretend we're in an elevator uh, and you do I what can... I like to call giving me an elevator pitch. Oh, you should totally coin that phrase. Ballet. Yeah, but you're not a ballerina. So why do you Thanks care? Thanks a lot. Yeah. Okay, give me a quiz. God. <laughs> sure. Just pull the ripcord. I could right, be a ready? ballerina if I want. Okay. This first one has uh, seven seven possibilities on it. So which of the following can be ca caused by bore? Oh, God. Learn which how to talk. Uh, which of the following can be caused by poor posture? Headaches, back and neck pain, knee, hip, and foot pain, shoulder pain and impingement, jaw pain, fatigue and breathing problems, or all of the above? All of the above, except for maybe jaw pain. I'll put that one in there too. All of the above. All of the above. That's very good because when you say all of the above, there isn't a selection then for except. Oh, I didn't. I, yeah. Right. I mean, you know how like right. the SATs I, work or whatever. There's okay. But very good. You got that one right. Good job. I thought it might be select all that apply. Yeah. So I'm sure that there are <laughs> websites and places you can go to do research that say, <laughs> Posture will affect every single aspect of your health, but right. these are the ones that I found to be, without doing any like scientific research, <laughs> these are the ones that I found to be plausible. No, I agree. That's consistent with the actual scientific research I did. So thanks for saving me time later. Oh, yeah, sure. Absolutely. You don't have to go into that boring crap now. Number two, you ready? Yeah. So far, you're, you're doing really well, Julie. I Good know. Job. I'm so excited. Okay. True or false? There is a correct seated slouch position. False. Wrong. True. What? At least according to posturite.co.uk, there's a, an article they have called The Art of Sitting. And if you can imagine what this looks like, imagine you have like a super ergodynamic office chair. I don't know if the okay. military gives you that kind of stuff. <laughs> Not but, me, but they give it out to others. I'm to sure. others, okay. So you have the flat part that your butt is on, and then you have the backrest. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so what it looks like you do is you put the whole thing, the backrest, uh, along with the flat part, into like a tipping ability, and then you tip the whole thing backwards, kind of like an astronaut. Oh, okay. So that the backrest isn't tipping by itself, but the back and the seat are both tipping. And I'll put a I'll put the picture in the show notes. That would too. be helpful. Yeah, but it's uh, it's what I like to call astronaut sitting. When I said, "Oh, okay," it was because I kind of tuned out and didn't really understand. But I, you know, it's okay. I'll look at the picture. Yeah, and I think you need to pretend <laughs> to fake it till you bake it here, Julie. How do you think I make it through your psychology section? I just want to 
it to be genuine for the listeners. Oh, very good. Do you think that comes through? Yeah. Number three. Number three. If two people are talking, the one who is in a lower status is, and then choose all that apply, standing or sitting or has a straight posture or is in a nonchalant posture. Ooh. Is, uh, what's the genders? Gender neutral, just two people who are- Oh, you mean men? No, I meant two (laughs) women. Like if Wonder Woman is talking to uh, the Little Mermaid- well, uh, Wait, are those two things equivalent? <laughs> no. I would say probably the person sitting in a nonchalant position is the most powerful. That's exactly right. Yes. Uh, exactly right. The, the person who can be more comfy, more relaxed, etc., right. is showing that they have the power in the relationship. Interesting. Yeah. So I think we, you know, we kind of talked a little bit about that in one of our past podcasts. Can't remember which one at this point, but yeah, something like that. Are you ready for some posture history? Yeah, I'd love it. This is History by Mark. You can do it. Thank you. I'm going to sit up straight for as long as I can (laughs) handle it. All right, Julie, let me tell you a story. Let's say there was a girl, we'll call her Princess Putrescence, and she had terrible posture. It was really hurting her. What's that? I'm just laughing. No, please. Go. <laughs> okay, can I continue without interrupting? Yeah, yeah, please? no, it's great. No, but great. please, if you have questions, go ahead. So okay. the posture, of course, was hurting her back, Julie, and her self-esteem to be slouching around all the time. And so what we're going to do is we're going to follow putrescence through history to see what her options were for achieving that perfect Halle Berry posture. Okay. Great. okay. All right. So that's the premise. That's the setup here. So Julie, have you ever worn a corset? Yes. Well, really, you have. Under yes. what circumstances? <laughs> I'd rather not say. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. I'd rather not know, I guess. No, I changed my mind. Well, in 1887, putrescence would run right out and buy a corset, maybe even a style number 217. Is that the one that you wore? <laughs> oh, by, absolutely. Yeah, it's by the Ferris Brothers of New York City, and they were made- like real get, whalebone? Maybe. They were made for infants to adults for health, comfort, wear, and finish. And they're pretty much everything you would expect from a corset. And I put the ad in the show notes here. I mean, crazy for babies, too. Can you imagine? After wearing the corset for a while, putrescent starts to notice that her muscles are atrophying. I mean, that (laughs) is totally a thing that could happen, right? So... In 1913, oh, and I want to be clear here that putrescence also has access to a time machine. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Right. So we have to add that to the story here too. Uh, so in 1913, when with the nudging of the American Posture League, are you a member, are you a member of that? You, <laughs> I'm not. I want to join though. Can you right? post a link? I, I don't know if they still exist. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. She starts performing core strengthening exercises at her school desk. Now, just imagine oh, she's that. she's like they were, planking? Uh, well, she was doing sit-ups. So imagine oh. those real old school. <laughs> imagine those really old school desks. So there's putrescence, and she climbs up onto uh, the desktop and puts her feet like underneath the bolted down desk chair and leans back to do sit-ups. Okay, so are you just making that up, or is that actually the kind of exercises? They no, did? that's the kind of exercise they did. I have what? a picture of a kid doing that. Um, from 1913, yeah. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Yeah, they were, I mean, the, the American Posture Society was quite ahead of its time considering core strength and stuff. They don't show planking, but they do show this thing. So unfortunately, by 1921, putrescence is bored of doing strengthening exercises, just like most of us. And she's heard more and more, Julie, about the marvels of science and how she shouldn't re- be relying on her own instincts anymore and should mm. go to see a knowledgeable doctor. Sound familiar? Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He, and it was, of course, Julie, <laughs> a he, immediately x-rays her to prove how her slouching is causing her to have a condition called ptosis. Mm. Actually, would you pronounce that P in P-T-O-S-I-S? <laughs> I or would it just be ptosis? I don't know. Huh. I don't know either. I probably well, should have looked that up beforehand. Well, anyway, according to an ad from Spencer Corsets, um, ptosis is a relaxed... Con- well, do you want to guess what it is? You probably have it. Hold on. You probably have it. I'm just guessing. Your, your posture is pretty terrible. 
What are, you, what are we holding for? Hold on, you'll hear. Do, 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 Oh, it's not playing because I've got my microphone plugged into the computer. Never mind, I was trying to play, like, how to pronounce ptosis on YouTube. It was going to be really funny. but That would have been good. Downside of doing the recording the way we're doing, right? Right, exactly. Okay, so according to an about? ad, yeah, yeah. So it's according, <laughs> she's, she just went to the doctor, putrescence did, okay. got an x-ray and the doctor said, yep, there's proof you have ptosis. And according to an advertisement from Spencer Corsets, ptosis mm -hmm. is a relaxed condition of the abdominal, I can't say that word, condition of the abdominal muscles, which causes tummy the, muscles, tummy muscles, yes, which causes the stomach and intestines to sag out of place, causes headaches, backaches, and indigestion as well. And this is the important part, a loss of style. <laughs> okay, many yeah. questions. But one, yeah. is Unpack it that. because of wearing the corset or no, is it no. just the because ptosis, of slouching? No, no, the ptosis, because of slouching, you have ptosis and the oh, corset company lack makes of corsets. style. Oh, my uh, yes, it creates all those problems oh. and lack of style. Oh, okay. Yeah, super interesting. Putrescence, of course, needs all the style she can get, Julie, just like you do. And <laughs> so One more question. Wait, wait, wait. We're, wait. We're, most of the stuff you saw, was it aimed at women or I only look for things that were aimed at women. Okay. Intentionally, because that I wanted to get the most you. awesome, helpful things for you. <laughs> Thank you. I, I need all the help I can get. You're welcome. Um, so a lot of these things, like that first ad I talked about, said that it was good for babies and kids. Oh, um, some right. of these things, like this next thing that she went out and bought in 1921, was um, she got fit for a Spencer abdominal belt that helps with ptosis. And it's for uh, men and women. Um, okay. But it's, here's what here's the sentence about it. For comfortable negligee wear, for <laughs> tennis, golf, swimming, dancing, and other exercises, the Spencer abdominal belt is an ideal support. It's easy and light in weight and can be comfortably slept in. So when I read that, yeah. I just started thinking of this awesome Saturday Night Live skit about the old fashioned, um, they were they were the old fashioned feminine napkins. And basically they were like these giant thick pads connected <laughs> with like right. rubber and clips and all kinds of things. Ugh. It's just like that. So comfortable. So comfortable. Yeah. So in... Thank goodness, Julie, by the 1940s, there was more help on the scene for poor putrescence. The Corset and the Brazier Association of America, are you a member of that group? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, they wrote a guide about choosing the right foundation wear to help with posture, and it, they described eight essentials <laughs> to the foundation to the foundation wear or to good posture. And, and here they are from the, from the Brazier and Corset Association of okay. America. Number one, head erect, chin in, chest high, shoulders level, abdomen flat, lower back flat, legs straight, and feet parallel. Very so, interesting. Right. So that foundation wear that, of course, they are interested in selling will help you with yeah. that. Right. And so by now, it's been about 53 years of trying to get good posture for putrescence. And she's getting really tired of dealing with it, of course. <laughs> it's a poor. long time. What's a that? lot of money and a lot it's of money. A, a lot of money. And just imagine the energy she has to put into that time machine. Oh, okay. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, so she goes back into her time machine and pops out into the 1970s as a happy non-corset wearing high schooler. Uh, however, she gets caught up in scoliosis screening at her high school. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Do you remember that stuff? I'm going to be talking all about it. All right, good. Well, the preferred examination became the Adams Forward Bend Test, whereby examinees standing disrobed from the waist up would bend over in front of the examiner. If the examiner detected a rib hump, which I'm not exactly sure what that is, <laughs> but I'm guessing that you probably have a rib hump or two, then the student would be considered <laughs> at risk for scoliosis. So uh, putrescence, however, found no rib lumps, and she goes off under the bleaches, bleachers with some friends. <laughs> nice. Uh, so, Julie, you know what's on every girl's mind? Standing up straight, of course. Of and, course. And by the 1990s, 
it's back on Putrescence's mind. But all she can find at the library in the 90s are books with titles like Alternative Conventional Defense Postures in the European Theater, India's oh, Emergency. Such a good one. Right? India's emergency, Emerging Nuclear Posture Between Recess Deterrent and Ready Arsenal, and Constraints that, on France's Defense Posture. That, so okay. she goes back. I, she goes. I think back. putrescence doesn't really understand the multiple meanings of the word posture. It it could be. It could totally be. It's and she an doesn't know how to use her resources. Not right. Not a synonym. Right. Right. So she goes back into her time machine. She gets out in 2017. She learns how to use the internet, which is actually pretty good. <laughs> and she's rewarded with an incredible new selection of posture aids off Amazon that you could go out right now and buy, Julie. And here's here's the three that she found that she liked the most. Posture corrector, middle back exerciser, the electronic posture aid, 30 <laughs> minutes per day to improve your posture. And Does it arm- shock you if you slouch? <laughs> that one, I'm not sure how it works. Armstrong America Thoracic Back Brace Magnetic <laughs> Posture Corrector. Whoa. And what do you think she ends up doing? She accidentally wears that next to her computer and it erases all her <laughs> That's data. Right. That's awesome. No, she buys herself a Lumo Lift posture coach and activity tracker because she finally learned how to actually use a smartphone as well. And she <laughs> thought that became her new best friend. And so with that Lumo Lift posture coach, it's a little tag you stick on your clothes uh-huh. and it has an accelerometer in it so that when you start bending over with bad posture, yeah. it, it buzzes on your cell phone or oh in your, on your, against your body or some such thing. Are you going to do that for this challenge? No, it's like 90 bucks. Oh, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. She's finally satisfied relying on herself and her best friend, her smartphone. The end. <laughs> Okay, first of all, I love the story. It was fantastic. Thank Second you. of all, a question about the corsets. So yeah. I'm guessing that they were more <laughs> so intended to help with looking thin and the right shape and that posture was just an added benefit? You know, I think you're probably right. I don't know enough about it. What was interesting in my research is that I found advertisements where health were, was the primary focus of the corset wearing. Interesting, and- but that also could be wink wink nudge nudge like it, early it vibrators be. were you know advertised as health devices it, it could certainly be i mean that's speculation okay and then my next comment these days women still wear those kinds of garments not made out of whalebone but it's really really common for women to wear undergarments that help shape them i, I don't remember what they're called shaping foundational garments or something like that spanks and other things like that uh, uh-huh. as, and you know and it's all about being thin i mean i've never seen one of those with an advertisement about you know and stand up straight so right. just kind of interesting and there's certainly no health benefits attached to them fake ones or real ones well it's a great question Julie, because after the 1920s, you get into sort of flapper mentality, which was a more right. casual atmosphere. But then things and posture started becoming important for standing up straight again in the 1940s and 50s. But then once again, in the 60s, 70s and beyond, having good posture wasn't connected with also being a good person like it used to be. So although good posture was important for things like actual physical pain and muscle aches and that sort of thing, it wasn't really tied to moral equivalency. My guess is for the random person, especially for women, Mm -hmm. probably not. But for presidential candidates Mm -hmm. and people, CEOs, Mm -hmm. that it's always been and always will be very important. Yeah, that that could definitely be. Yeah, anyway, so that's okay. history, Julie, and everything Fantastic. you could possibly ever want to know about poor putrescence. Everything. I love it. Maybe we can hear from her again in a future episode oh, I about think, something else. I think we will hear from putrescence okay. again, yes. <laughs> okay, so do you remember my history with scoliosis and stuff? Yeah, can I tell everybody? Yeah. So, yeah, if you haven't ever seen Julie, all you have to imagine <laughs> is that one character from... The young Dr. Frankenstein, the Igor what? character. No. That's no. what Julie looks like. I do slouch a lot. Yeah, you're very that's slouchy. Not what I'm, that's not what I'm talking about, though. You, Maybe had to have block- a, you had to have a back brace for a yes. long time. And I remember you couldn't even go swimming. Was that right? Well, not with it on. But not with I it could on. take it. I was allowed to take it off for like an hour a day if right. I had dance lessons or something. So, yeah, I was one of those kids. I mean, I remember doing those scoliosis tests all the time. Mm-hmm. And my ballet instructor, 
asked mom to take me to a doctor to get it checked out. And I didn't have scoliosis. I had something called lordosis, which is a different kind of curvature. And I was pretty excited to do the research for this episode because I was like, I want to know what is the research on these screenings and on the kind of brace I had to wear. So right. Because called- just based on what I was looking at, I would say that, I mean, unless you were really at risk for poor muscle development and spinal development, that seems like a way to atrophy the muscles. Yeah, for sure. I could see that. I, from like, I guess it maybe like fourth grade to sixth grade, wore a Boston brace, which you couldn't tell that I was wearing anything just from looking at me externally because this was in the 80s. So I was wearing, you know, a turtleneck and a huge bulky sweater everywhere. So you couldn't tell, except I was just a kid standing up straight. And it was remarkably not traumatic for me at all. Really? Like, I remember hating getting all the appointments and everything. And it was really annoying to have to wear a thing. But I never felt like the kid in, I don't know if it was 16 Candles who wore a brace, who, like you know, felt really weird, or the book Deanie by Judy Bloom. It wasn't anything like that there were two cool things about wearing the brace one was there were little air holes in it and it's like this big plastic cast kind of thing that goes around you and it buckles up and back so one thing about it is it has these air holes in it and it's the exact size of a number two pencil (laughs) so what I could do was stick the pencils in through my sweater and have them stick out of the brace like I was a porcupine that is awesome it was of that awesome no um And keep in mind, I was in fourth grade, so I was very creative with this. That's pretty and the good. Other, yeah. And the other thing was I could pull a Harry Houdini and have people try to punch me in my stomach, and then they would, you know, get bruised knuckles, except I also cool. pulled a Harry Houdini, and then one day um, after I stopped wearing it, a boy punched me in the stomach, and it really hurt. But Aww. he... Yeah, it, 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 you know, I mean, he wasn't trying to be mean. It was like, oh, there's the girl with the cool abs punch. Does that... Did it interfere with you playing on the playground or anything? I don't remember that. What about like Foursquare? Playing Foursquare. <laughs> I love Foursquare. I don't think it interfered with Foursquare. It probably okay, interfered well, with good. me doing like, you know, hanging upside down on the jungle gym because I wasn't able to bend over. So yeah, I guess uh-huh. it probably did. Okay. But I don't remember anyone making fun of me for it or anything. I don't know. I don't have lordosis anymore. I guess I got other stuff, but not that. So that happened. And then I stopped wearing it. I don't know if it helped or not. I'm assuming it did. But here's the the research studies I looked at said, yes, it is actually effective. So I'm glad to know that mom and dad didn't spend that money and time needlessly. Um, but here's the thing. Those scoliosis screenings are yeah. not effective. Oh. And yeah. Who like, would have thought? I know, right? And they're just, you know, a huge time spent and schools still do them. I don't think people have to take off their shirts anymore, but who knows. But here's the thing, schools still do them because it's one of those things that will be boys done it and no school wants to be the school that's like, no, we're not going to put time and money into this health issue. So right. it's still like just a really common thing. Oh, but not not every single school, but it still happens in many places every single year, even <sighs> right. though the research I looked at said, yeah, this is the kind of thing that a well child check will pick up. You know, it doesn't have to be done in this way. And the screenings aren't actually that good. But hey, yeah, no. (laughs) Why not make kids strip down and get touched by strangers every year? That's great. Yeah, why not? Why not? Okay. So I, just real quick, Mm -hmm. big sloucher. And I was trying to think of like, when did I start slouching? Because definitely the brace made me not slouch for sure. And I think it's like the combination of developing as a young woman and wearing a backpack that made me start slouching because Mm. here's the thing about wearing a backpack it makes people's breasts jut out sorry to gross you out but like as a young teen I think I was really embarrassed by that and so I think that's probably part of when my slouch started and I've just been like a super duper sloucher ever since moving on okay so the research (laughs) (laughs) the research I looked at (laughs) is that posture fashion confidence and gender those four things totally interact the research Mm -hmm. is pretty clear on uh, you know everything you said before is right on about the health Oh yeah, of I nailed it. Yay. <laughs> but there's also like the fashion and, and confidence is really interesting. So do you remember our fashion episode when we gave up dressing down? Do I ever? <laughs> okay, you wore a tie and I wore fancy stuff every day. Yep. It's it's likely that we probably slouched less then as well. 
That's that when people are dressed up nicely, we're we're more likely to stand up straight. And also, mm. I don't know about you, I felt way more confident those two weeks. Mm-hmm. And so I was more likely probably to be standing up straight as well. Oh, I want you to just imagine for a second. What, what are you wearing right now? Right now I'm wearing pajamas. Okay. <laughs> okay. Pret- <laughs> pretend. Shut up. What's so funny about that? Nothing. Everybody, people who are listening to the show are wearing pajamas. Why can't I? Okay, pretend that your pajama shirt is a painter's coat. You're wearing that because you're a painter, right? You're a house okay. painter. Okay, so like interior or exterior? It, interior walls, but okay. not fine art painting. Got it. I mean, it might be fine. It's adequate art painting. Adequate anyway, art painting. so you're you're doing some painting, okay? Okay. Now just imagine that. All right. I'm a now, okay. Now imagine that the, you're. Wearing that same exact white coat. It's the exact same one, but it's actually not a painter's coat. It's a lab coat, and it's a doctor's lab coat. Okay? I think I'm following you. (laughs) Go ahead. (laughs) How do you feel now? Dun, dun, dun. I feel kind of stupid trying to examine my patients, (laughs) and all I have are paint buckets with me. In pajama bottoms. And paint brushes and pajama bottoms. Julie, this... (laughs) <laughs> this this sucks. Okay, so I don't they like did this. The, Get me so out of this fantasy world that you've put me in. There's this crazy experiment where they gave people lab coats and painter's coats, and they were, of course, the exact same coats, and had them do puzzles and things. They just the people, told them that they were different right, or something? exactly. Okay. People wearing the doctor's lab coat stood up straighter, and oh, they were more confident, and they finished cognitive tasks faster so huh. they had to do puzzles they did the puzzles faster oh brother yeah so it's just one of those things clothes makes the man i mean God, it literally science is does. so stupid <laughs> another thing about good posture it makes people feel physically stronger so mm. i'm kind of i'm wondering like when i'm at the gym like i definitely <laughs> kind of like skulk around a little bit i'm not one of those people who like wants people to notice me so i'm sure i'm probably slouching all over the place there oh, God. but maybe if i saunter over to the squat mm-hmm. rack i'll be way awesomer also when we're have good posture we're more resilient to pain so huh? i can't yeah it could be one of those confidence things people who have good posture do better in job interviews also when people are promoted they mm-hmm. stand up straighter you mean like on the day of their promotion no in general what if you're doing the same job for multiple years do you start to slouch and slouch more it might and more? be time to to start looking around Okay, God. It's also possible that, I don't know about this, it's just my guess, that maybe like lower status employees subconsciously adopt a slouching position because it's less threatening. And perhaps as they move up, they are feel that, okay, well, I'm allowed to come into this meeting and take up more physical space and stand up straight because I have the higher status. Mm-hmm. There's, you know, the power plays of, of uh, gesturing like if you're about to speak a lot of times men will put their hands behind their back or behind the back of their head and stretch out their legs and Mm -hmm. physically take up a lot of space as a sign of dominance and it's not something that most men i think deliberately do they're like oh time for me to uh, do my dominant thing (laughs) you know and so anyway i think all of that is intertwined and it's also probably part of the reason why women don't do those dominant positions so there's some facts fascinating studies of you know women versus men and all of this men who are okay pay attention to this this is really important to you mark all right Pe- men who have good posture are seen as more intelligent really yes hmm. so okay. dude i'm just saying you can use all the help you can get you're so. absolutely right well <laughs> i truly believe that it's better that people think you're stupid than to open up your mouth and prove it and if i have good posture <laughs> That will help disprove it even more. So great. Okay. So basically, it's okay for men to take up this space. They can do this power posture. And so there's a couple different kinds of posture. One is just standing up straight. Mm -hmm. But then another is like these powerful positions where like they're using a fist to demonstrate what they're saying and standing with their legs uh, shoulder width apart while talking. That those positions are still seen as signs of intelligence in men and people seem to attribute confidence to them. Women 
people do like seeing women stand up straight, but if women adopt those power positions, they're then seen as unacceptably masculine or bossy, et cetera. Did you get so, into any of the discredited research about women's um, power stances? No, I don't know what you mean. There was a TED Talk a few years back from a psychologist, I believe, who was going on about how there are powerful ways that women can stand to present themselves more powerfully and they will be Hmm. perceived as being more powerful. And then, so a lot of money has been spent over the intervening years by corporations bringing in people to show their employees how to stand and be more powerful, people taking courses, blah, blah, blah. And then most recently, what happened is somebody on her research team came forward and saying how their research wasn't any good. Ouch. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, God, I hate hearing stories like that. But yeah, that's consistent with what I read, that for women, neutral positions, still standing upright, but neutral positions were more acceptable. That people were uncomfortable with the power positions. I Also, in that same article, it talked about fashion, back to our fashion thing, mm-hmm. that men in suits, everybody loves them. Women oh. in suits... What was that noise? (laughs) (laughs) Women in suits. People only liked women in skirt suits. And once women were in like pantsuits and like more masculine attire, people were like, not so much. So, I mean, and when I say people, screw that, women, dress how you want. But if you're trying to appease the masses, apparently we need to maintain our femininity if we want to do well in interviews. Gosh, I mean, I think that's really it. There's really no good reason to slouch around. Well, good luck, Julie. You're going (laughs) to suck at this. Well, I'm going to do the same thing I did for, I forget. Did we give up interrupting ones? Yeah, the interrupting, I wore jewelry that I don't normally wear to remind me. I'm going to do the same for slouching. I'm going to wear rings that I don't normally wear and stuff like that. I'm going to tell all my coworkers that I'm doing this and give them carte blanche to nudge me if I start slouching. That's good. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'll do the same with, with my family. My coworkers okay. are kind of sick of hearing about this, but okay. my family is not. <laughs> I guess my coworkers kind of like being able to bother me. I'm not sure yeah. what their deal is. <laughs> I, could, I get it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. So I'll talk to you in a couple weeks then. Yeah. Good luck. You too. Bye. So, Kindy, over the next couple of days when I'm dressed up a little nicer, I need you to take a couple of pictures of me sitting and standing to show what kind of bad posture I have because we're giving up having bad posture for this episode. You have excellent posture. That's not, you're not giving up anything. What are you talking about? I'm you always slouching around. Posture. No, you're not. Really? No, you have very good posture. For real? Like yeah. even my neck and like yeah. my lower you're back always, and stuff? Yeah. You, you sit in the perfect position. You're obsessed with everything being ergonomically appropriate for you. <laughs> and you sit up straight and you even sleep like ergo appropriate. Then why does my back with... always hurt? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> okay, but... well, that's really sweet of you to say. So <laughs> basically, I don't have anything to give up for this episode. I don't think that you have bad posture. Okay. Well, we'll take some pictures, okay? Yeah, I'll take... So you want me to catch you candidly? I like off guard, like when you're not paying attention, if Maybe. I see you slouching, yeah. get a picture. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think you have excellent posture. Julie has bad posture. <laughs> Thanks, bye. My name's Alana. I'm 28, and I'm a Planned Parenthood supporter and patient. I know that when I walk into Planned Parenthood, they're on my team. Insured or not, I'll be respected and cared for without judgment. Going to Planned Parenthood when you have insurance is a really easy way to support an organization that cares for your community. Planned Parenthood offers expert quality reproductive health care, including birth control, STD testing and treatment, wellness exams, and cancer screenings. Planned Parenthood. Care no matter what. Hey, Julie. How's it going? Good. Uh, Did you hate this one? You always hate these. Um, I didn't hate this one, um, but... Like you heard in the recording uh, from Kendra, I didn't really feel like I needed to do it. Oh, wait, why? Well, like Kendra said in the in the recording you just played, I have great posture. <laughs> then why did you suggest we do this stupid topic? Well, to give you something to work on. You know, you need... 
Okay, fair no, enough. No, no, I, I do slouch around. I really actually don't know where Kendra's coming from on that because okay. a lot of times I do think that I could be sitting up straight. Like I'm sitting here talking to you now all slumped over. Now I'm sitting up straight. Can you sense okay. my power coming through the microphone? Yeah, but maybe it's because you're like a tall giant guy. And so like <laughs> since Kendra's kind of shrimpy, I mean, she, since yeah. Kendra's fun size, you fun know, size. she's uh-huh. looking up at you and can't tell you're slouching. It just Yeah, you know, looks- she uses the words gangly to describe me. So <laughs> yeah, there might be something yeah, to that, Julie. Maybe. Yeah, No, so I did it and it was hard. I thought about my ergo chair and I also thought about how... It is really hard. For me, the hardest thing was sitting and having good posture. Yeah, Yeah, me too. Using basically muscles that I'm not used to using, I guess. So Yeah, it was just not comfortable. And so what did you try to do to 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 prolong that? Uh sitting was just the hardest thing for me because first of all, I just would forget. Because generally if I'm sitting, it means I'm like typing at my computer and I'm in the zone. I'm not like thinking about, ooh, is anyone looking at me right now? You know? Whereas if I'm standing I'm, I was better at it, especially if there were other humans around. When I was sitting in meetings, I yeah. concentrated on it more. When I was right. just sitting at my desk, um, I it was all bets were off. I have no idea if I was slouching or not because I, I forgot about it completely. That's interesting. So early on in the episode when, or in the, in the field work, uh-huh. I was in meetings, I was really trying to sit up straight. And what I found yeah. was it made me feel and I thought look like I was participating better in the meetings. Oh, really? Yeah, because you can't, <laughs> it's really helpful to be up close to the table when you sit up straight. Ah, and yeah, that's possible. And when you're pulled back from the table, even a foot or a little bit, and you look casual in relation to the table, it looks like you're disengaged. At least that's, that's how I take it. Fascinating. No, I can completely see that. Yeah. That makes so I, sense. So I found that to be really interesting, but also hard to do because some meetings just drag on and on. And eventually I just found myself chilling out in my ergo chair around the meeting table. <laughs> right, right. Um, standing is also a bit weird for me too. Like um, the counters in our house around our kitchen sink and stuff are, I think they're normal height, but for me, they're a little bit low and my back really hurts oh, after no. a while. So I was doing the standing up straight thing while doing uh-huh. dishes and cleaning up in the kitchen. And I felt like it was really helping uh, with that lower back pain, like standing up straight, keeping my muscles and my stomach right. tucked in, keeping my back muscles kind of tightened, whatever. And so I would have to do these things where I would say to myself, okay, do it for a minute and see how that you feel. And then right. do it for a, another minute, you know, and just try Train to push yourself. myself. Yeah, Julie, it was not just a matter of go ahead and do it for as long as I want. It was literally like using some muscles that I, that were not experienced. Oh, that's interesting. So So, do you feel like by the end, it became more natural to you? Yeah, I do feel by the end, it became more natural to me. And also by the end, uh, the feeling of what it felt like to be slouchy versus um, standing up straight or sitting up straight uh, didn't become more uncomfortable, but I could recognize more easily when I was slipping into that kind of a mode so that I could correct myself. Right. It is still a thing I have to think about to um, become, become unslouchy. For me, the easiest times, yeah, the biggest challenge here was just remembering to do it. So the easiest times were when I was actively like aware of trying to, I don't want to say impress people, but you know, like when you're around other humans and you know they're looking at you. Uh, So I, I, I did this experiment during a time when I was flying to a different location and taking a class. And in this class were some incredible other people. And so I... I definitely was like aware of all the humans around me and wanted to present myself well. And Mm -hmm. so it was a lot easier to remember than the parts of this experience where I was just at my normal work and nobody cares what I'm doing anyway. I'm just Mm -hmm. at my desk working. There was one moment when I, so I was traveling and I brought a certain amount of clothes with me and I had this one dress that I never really worn before. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. Have you ever had this experience, Mark, where you have a new dress and you try it on at the store and it looks great. And then when you actually put it on to like go do your thing, you feel like, oh, this is a stupid dress. Um, No, because when I go to a store and buy stuff, it's usually, I mean, men's clothes are usually like pants, shirt, maybe a jacket, and they're all the same shape. Okay, fair enough. Well, this was not. It was a dress that was like tight in certain places and weird in other places. Right. 
when I put it on in the hotel room, I was like, oh, God, do I have to wear this? And I was well, yeah, because I only have two things to wear and I've got to go to this class for four days and I'm not gonna wear the same thing every single day. So I put on the dress and I was like standing up straight walking around and I realized, okay, this is seriously helping me because it had that effect of I am going to pretend I'm confident and I feel great and I started to feel great and be confident, you know, and I tried not to look in mirrors and I was just like, okay, well, I'm just gonna go here and act like I wanted to look this way in this weird dress that I probably wouldn't have worn, you know? Well, anyway, so, I don't know. It's just a little thing, but it's So it that's interesting. So wearing something that was uncomfortable t- for you to wear made you stand up straighter? Well, no, I stood up straight because of this stupid challenge. But then when I was, it made me feel better about wearing a dress that I might not normally wear. Okay. I, maybe that's too confusing for you to understand. That was pretty, we, can, that was pretty high concept. You, yeah. yeah, I can make you a diagram later. Yeah, but that'd be the, good. The other time it really helped a lot was at the gym. I do work out quite a bit and sometimes less successfully than others. You know, I'm on the older side of people Mm -hmm. at the gym and I'm one of the few women who are weight training and stuff. You know, I just walking around deliberately trying to stand up straight. I think it did Mm -hmm. help my confidence a little. I don't know that it helped me do more reps and sets and blurps and bleeps. But it made you feel better about your bulbous weird parts. (laughs) Right, good. Exactly. My daughter is in the habit these days of patting my tummy. Oh, God. It's great. So this is great. I would highly recommend this to anybody. Me too. I yeah. think no matter what field you're in, try this, e- even if it's just for a couple of days and identify when it's helpful to you, when it doesn't yeah. really matter. There's really nothing to lose. I'd love to hear back from anybody. There is nothing to lose except your sanity. No, I don't know why. <laughs> I, I guess you that. could have some lower back pain if you're trying to do it sitting in a chair. And like you said, you just don't have those muscles yet. Yeah, you have to work up to it, definitely. Um, yeah. So the other thing I wanted to say is if any of our listeners, if you've used something like one of these electronic gizmos, oh, like yeah. a Lumo Lift posture coach or activity tracker, that kind of thing that like buzzes at you, beeps at you, shocks you, <laughs> um, maybe sprays citronella in your face Ooh, if you do it wrong. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, write in to us on Facebook or iTunes or we're Twitter. At wag- we're at Wagon Pod. That's right. We are at Wagon Pod. <laughs> We're at Wagon Pod on Twitter, and you can also write us an email at wagonpodcast at gmail.com. That's right. And while you are surfing the internet, um, hop on over to iTunes and give us a review and subscribe if you'd like, mm-hmm. like our good friend The Quad Father did. So, Mark, do you remember who The Quad Father is? I do. Yes. Well, I mean, you can pretend you don't, so I can explain it. All right. Ask me again. Hey, Mark, do you remember who the quad father is? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, Julie, I don't. Tell me. Who is okay, who's the so, quad father? <laughs> he is an amazing podcaster. You're such a jerk. And he has two really good shows. One is called Shrink to Shrink because he's actually a therapist as well, which just shows how awesome he is. And mm-hmm. he and another therapist talk about movies and from like a psychology perspective. So it's pretty funny and really mm-hmm. fascinating. And they put in clips and then talk about it from the behavioral health perspective. The other show he does is the Quadcast podcast, which we are going to be on tomorrow morning. So or we're going to record that tomorrow morning. So, and given how he's way better at this than we are, I'm guessing that episode will actually release before this one does. Uh-huh. So we'll see. It'll be a race. But either way, we will promote that on Facebook and stuff. But you can check it out at Quadcast Podcast. He's he's a really, really good Did you say that he wrote a review about us? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he said. I just want to sh- get you back to the point <sighs> that this is about us, not not him. <laughs> Fair enough. This show grabbed me right out of the gate. I love changing little things in my life. And the entertaining hosts take a challenge every show to give up something for two weeks. Then they report back about how it went. No waiting. And he really likes no our waiting, great, great no waiting, right? He likes our great chemistry and fun banter. Then he wrote hashtag must listen. Hear that? that? Yeah, that's awesome. So well, thank you very much. Hashtags for that like that. I mean, seriously, that's. <laughs> Have you noticed a spike in our listenership yet? From that hashtag must listen? Yeah, yeah. I know. It's amazing. It has an immediate effect. Yes. Thank okay, you, so Quadcast yes. Father. What's his name? Quad Father? <laughs> the Quad Father. The Quad Father. Thank uh, you. Not Quad Fur. Quad, quad Fur? Fa- no. Quad, quad Fourier. What? 
Quad father. Quad okay, we'll, father. we'll do a bunch of links. Nobody listen to Mark. Okay, okay perfect. Connect with us on Facebook and Twitter, Station Wagon Podcast. We are at Wagon Pod. Thank you so much to the Pleasure Kills for the use of the song Modern Problems. And, and thanks, and, listeners. And, yes, go ahead. And, <laughs> thank you to the listeners who've been sharing us with your friends. I've been, I can tell sometimes people share the silly Facebook posts that we put out and they share it to their own feed. And that's really awesome. It helps us find new listeners. Right. Also, and Julie, didn't you say that if people share our show with 10 friends that you will bake them cookies and FedEx them out? <laughs> Was, wasn't there something like that going on? I, I don't remember. I don't remember agreeing to that. Oh, um, okay. If All right. Never mind wants anybody. To make a don't deal, bother I, Julie about it. E- email me and uh, we'll we'll work something out between me and the listeners. Okay. Um, thanks to our spouses and our children for putting up with us. Yes, thank you, children, for putting up with us. And next time it's going to be awesome and, and also really and spouses. Yeah. We are going to be giving up our filler words. Do you know what that is? Um. Like, yes. Exactly. Hmm. You know. Yeah. You know. Exactly. So yeah, that's that going to be, be impossible. Are we going to have us? Are we going to have a filler word jar like we did for swear jars? I don't even think we will have the insight to know in the moment that we're doing it. But what we are going to do, I haven't told you this yet, is oh, I'm going to record. I'm going to record us, or we're going to record each other throughout the experiment for like a couple minutes at a time, and then do uh-huh. an audio analysis of it. Like record ourselves. Just talking. Just talking extemporaneously, like in a meeting or something? Yeah. Huh. Interesting. I don't know. I haven't figured out the details yet. But All right. Well, figure them out. Awesome. Let me know. Maybe okay. we can poll some friends on Facebook about it. Maybe, yeah, on the, maybe we could to tweet too. Yeah. People like doing that. All right, Julie. Yeah, people love tweeting. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye, Mark. Smell you later. <laughs> How do you okay. say that piece of paper that gives you a discount at stores? Coupon. Me too. Oh. How is that related to posture? I don't know. I'm just curious. Coupon, oh, coupon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>